The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Gold sponsor, Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Boyle Construction, Clunk and Milan Advertising, and Olympus Corporation of the Americas. Thank you to our interview sponsor, Victolic. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications, and our hosts throughout the Lehigh Valley. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series. On behalf of Capital Blue Cross, I would like to welcome you to the LVEDC Executive Interview Series. As a proud member of the Lehigh Valley business community, Capital Blue Cross recognizes the importance of economic development and the critical role that business leaders play in the growth and development of our region. That's why we decided to sponsor this important series so you can hear the visions and plans that keep our valley on the cutting edge directly from these key leaders. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hello, I'm Don Cunningham, President and CEO of the Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation. Thank you for watching another episode of our new executive series here in the Lehigh Valley, which we started during the pandemic in 2020 to give everyone a chance to meet the new executives running the businesses and employers of the Lehigh Valley at a time when we couldn't get together in person. There has been a record number of new and exciting leaders taking over major employers here in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, today we have one of those in Sarah Santos, who is the president of Cigars International, uh, operating out of Bethlehem with some exciting things to talk about. She's been with Cigars International since 2003. She's held various leadership positions in marketing and operations. Uh, and has been a key in the development and the growth of Cigars International, the retail superstores and the online uh, orders direct to consumer business. Uh, in the community, she serves on the board of LifePath Foundation, which raises funds to support services for individuals with autism, intellectual and development disabilities. She grew up uh, not far away in the Poconos and is the granddaughter of a Bethlehem steel worker. So, Sarah, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Thanks, Don, my pleasure. Happy to be here and happy it's in person. Yes, it's great to be in person. As I mentioned, we started this series when we couldn't get together in person. Uh, it was really helpful. It's, in, it's been interesting. We've had uh, nothing short of about uh, 18 different new leaders from large employers. Uh, you certainly are one of those. You started in January of 2020, unknowingly, right before the pandemic settled in in, in March. Uh, with Cigars International, so that had to be a, a, a challenging first year. Right? It, it was quite a start. I said, oh my goodness, what have I gotten myself into? And you kept operating during the, the pandemic. We, right? we, sure those, did. Right? we, we sure did. We sure did. And it's really been a challenge, as it has been for leaders across the country, right. to modify our approach due to the pandemic. Ultimately, we've, we've got our stride, we've, we've got things running smoothly, and ultimately continue to experience growth. Can you explain a little bit, for someone maybe not familiar with the operation in Bethlehem, uh, what is the process? Uh, people know you as the retail stores, there's a retail store in downtown Bethlehem. That's correct. Uh, but a bulk of the business is, is online direct to consumer. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. So about 90% of our business is through e-commerce and online. Um, which means in Bethlehem, we've got our North American headquarters, which is a distribution center as well as offices. Um, we ship about two and a half million packages a year from that Bethlehem facility. Uh, but we also operate retail stores. We've got seven today, three of which are in the Lehigh Valley area, uh, one on Main Street in Bethlehem. Was that, that was the first store? Right? That was the first yeah. store, yeah. And it's still, it's still operating. Still yeah. operating. Yeah. Um, and our second store was on 191 in Bethlehem. Okay. And then we have a superstore in Hamburg. So uh, Hamburg, we have nice. three, yep. So, and then there are also stores, I believe, in Florida and Texas, right? And yep. you, were, you were involved previous to this position in helping getting those stores established. I was, we've got four stores, two in Texas and, and two in the Florida market. Three of those stores opened over the course of 
2020 in the midst of the pandemic. So just a little extra challenge. So like a lot of companies, and we've talked about this a lot at LVDC and the research and data and reports we've put out, uh, while some companies were adversely affected uh, by the pandemic, particularly service companies, restaurants, arts and culture, we're here today at the beautiful State Theater in Easton, uh, which uh, we know was closed, had to be closed. Other stores, particularly the online direct-to-consumers, other companies saw tremendous growth. That's and correct. I, I was reading, saw what, 20, 30 percent growth? The, yep. Yeah. So our retail stores were impacted and closed yeah. for several months, but the online channel has definitely picked up a lot of that retail business um, and experienced tremendous growth. And you know, consumers of premium handmade cigars, um, you know, they can enjoy them in their mm -hmm. backyard and like yeah. a staycation. And mm -hmm. you know, during challenging periods, it's a, a form of relaxation, reflection. So we did do quite well throughout 2020. Now, the app, with that kind of growth, I believe in Bethlehem, you're up to almost 500 employees. That's and, correct. And also in the middle of an expansion. Uh, and you're located right on the former site of Bethlehem Steel in the uh, LVIP 7 Industrial Park. We are. We, yeah. We've exceeded 500 employees. Um, and we are in the industrial park and excited to be expanding. Um, we just broke ground on a 100,000 square foot expansion of our facility. It's nearly doubling. We have 113,000 square feet currently. Yeah. Now, and, uh, we had mentioned at the outset that Cigars International comes under the umbrella of a much larger company, uh, Scandinavian Tobacco. Can you talk a little bit about that relationship? I sure can. So Cigars International is a subsidiary of Scandinavian Tobacco Group, which is headquartered in Copenhagen, Denmark, and publicly traded on the Danish exchange. Um, globally, Scandinavian Tobacco Group has over 11,000 employees globally. We operate in over 100 markets and have literally hundreds of top-rated brands. And you're part of the executive management team of Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Right? I am. So how many different uh, subsidiaries come in under Scandinavian Tobacco? So it's, there are three commercial divisions globally, of which I lead one within Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Yeah, that's, that's tremendous. And uh, did you, was this always, so you started with the company back in 03, was, at what point did it become a goal or a thought that maybe I could be the president of this uh, major company, not, international company? Yeah, great question. So not early on. I have been with the company going on 20 years now. Um, maybe about five years ago, I started setting my eyes on the, the top role, um, just waiting for the opportunity to arise. But uh, during the time preceding, the company had been fantastic support in making sure that I was ready, giving me ample opportunities to get experience in you know, diverse functions and divisions of the company. Mm -hmm. um, and well, it's certainly no secret for a long time, tobacco category has been in decline. Um, Scandinavian Tobacco Group's goal has always been growth and we've been able to deliver that. And in one of the strategies to do so is through mergers and acquisitions. So that's been an exciting part of my role. What was your background training leading you into the management marketing operations for tobacco retail? So early in my career, I started out in IT. Um, okay. it, working in New York, I was a director of IT. Uh, and that was one of the things that appealed to me about the opportunity at Cigars International because it was one that was going to allow me to branch out into other areas of the company. And one that I was specifically interested in was furthering my knowledge in direct-to-consumer marketing. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I would have to imagine that IT systems are a huge part of the process of moving that many cigars directly to consumers. Uh, absolutely, um, and not only that, at the heart of it, 90% of our sales are e-commerce. So right. there's a lot of technology evolved and it's ever evolving. Is it unique for um, uh, female 
to be in the cigar industry and in, in such a uh, uh, high level position at such a young age? There was a time that it was rare, but more and more women are involved in the industry, both working in it and consumers. Um, it's yeah. been fascinating to see our new stores in the Texas market. I, I recently had an opportunity to get to our Texas and Florida markets and observing the stores, about 30% of our patrons are female. In the stores? Um, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So in the uh, world of cigars, there are, I would imagine there are hundreds of different uh, producers of cigars, right? And then with each of those producers, they have different brands underneath their, their production. I mean, how many, generally, how many different cigars can one pick from? Oh, <laughs> wow. Well, there's actually thousands. thousands. Um, and we carry 2,000 brands alone. Uh, at Cigars International within each brand. There's different size cigars. So and believe it or not, we don't carry all of the cigars that are on the market. So yeah. there's lots and lots of options. Is, so as part of the process, part of your area of responsibility, um, liaisoning with the producers, making sure the quality is there because you're getting it from them. You're a, you're a distributor really, of, right. you're not a producer. So the division that I lead is not a producer, but right. Scandinavian Tobacco Group is a vertically integrated company. Okay. So we do own our own factories in Central America, the Caribbean, um, are primarily where our handmade cigars are made, although we own factories in other parts of the world. Uh, in my role, I do lead teams that do some new product development. We produce those cigars in our factory. Hmm, but the that's interesting. Yep, the majority we do buy from other manufacturers. So some of the cigars are made by the parent company, some are by others. Um, that, that's a, but that, so that's an interesting part of the business. The, the 500 or so folks that work here in Bethlehem for Cigars International, what are the main responsibilities, backgrounds of those jobs uh, sure. in those positions? It, there's quite a tremendous variety yeah. of individuals who work for the organization. Some of our, our largest groups of employees are certainly our distribution center. We also have a contact center on the north side of Bethlehem. Um, and you know, given the demographic of many of our consumers, a lot of them are still comfortable calling and placing an order over the phone. Uh, believe it or not, 20% of our business still comes over the phone. Our, our retail stores um, employ quite a few individuals. And then some of our other staff certainly has depth of technical knowledge, IT, digital marketing, uh, merchandisers, graphic designers. Yeah, and have you found that uh, Bethlehem is a good place to be for the workforce, the talent pool, for the variety of different jobs that, uh, that you have at Cigars? We have, um, certainly because there's several large universities that you know, cater to the skills we're looking for. We also find in the organization, you know, being in tobacco, it's a challenging industry. Um, regulation is ever evolving. So individuals who are you know, ambitious, resilient, and up for a challenge mm -hmm. uh, certainly thrive in our uh, culture. Now you mentioned regulation, and uh, as I understand it, Pennsylvania is, there's a reason why cigar companies are in Pennsylvania, right? It's, it's, uh, fairly uh, favorable uh, legislation around cigars. Uh, but correct. I would imagine though, you still have to spend a lot of time uh, monitoring and paying attention to government relations and regulation. That's correct. That's uh, certainly a large aspect of my role. And Pennsylvania is uh, one of several states that are friendlier to the cigar industry. Florida and New Hampshire are also amongst them. But that is ultimately why the founders established the company in yeah. Pennsylvania. 
And then that deals with what a t uh, taxation levels it on, is. on cigar. That's right? correct. There's a distinction between cigarettes and cigars, right? There, there is, and specifically the the taxation is excise tax. I mean, sales tax applies, you know, pretty much across the nation at this point. But it's excise tax. Yeah, and what we've seen uh, in the Lehigh Valley, particularly in the last five to seven years, is tremendous growth in direct to consumer retail. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of us being a logistics hub, uh, we're a large, you know, with 40% of the consumers of the United States within about a six hour drive from here. So we've seen, along with a lot of growth of production and manufacturing, we've also seen growth of really what is the new retail. Uh, you know, where, I mean, you're blended with bricks and mortar stores, but also direct to consumer. Uh, and the pandemic seems to have accelerated that, that movement with people ordering uh, a larger variety of products online uh, and, and from home. That's correct. We, we see the same and, and odd because the premium handmade cigar industry is, is a very traditional one. The products are truly handmade end to end and a wholly agricultural product. Um, but despite being such a traditional industry, it's one that had experienced a shift to online faster than many industries. About 60% of the, the transactions were already taking place online going into the pandemic. Um, and it just spurred further transition uh, to online. So it was 60% pre-March of 2020. Now it's up to, you said, what, almost 90%? Well, it, it likely spiked during a period of COVID, but we've certainly seen channel shift back to brick and mortar um, as vaccinations increase. Yeah. And that now, so can you talk a little bit about this expansion that you're in the midst of, which we're very grateful for as an organization that wants to retain companies, watch them grow here in the Lehigh Valley, and then also attract new companies to the market, um, we're very excited about it. In fact, little statistic from the, the economy of the Lehigh Valley is that 70% of the new jobs uh, that occur here are from companies that are already here growing. 30% uh, is great for new coming into the market, but by far the majority of our jobs, and Cigars has been one of those companies uh, for us. So in this uh, expansion is, what did you say, 100,000 square feet? That's right. From today, we're about 113,000 square feet, and we broke ground recently on an additional 100,000. Um, and we're just really excited to be experiencing continued growth that, sure, some, some was from the pandemic and channel shift, but we continue um, to gain market share. I've got a, a great team um, that, you know, in combination with tremendous cigar knowledge has been enhanced with individuals from other industries that are bringing great yeah. perspective to the company. So. so let's see, in your first year and a half, <laughs> you had to manage through a pandemic, go through a very difficult challenge on, on labor shortages, and manage a doubling of the facility size. That's, that's, yeah, that's it's been a great true. year. Yeah. <laughs> so do you ever get home? Do you ever see your family? I, I yeah. sure <laughs> do. I sure do. Yeah, my husband, I have two teenage boys. Two and teenage, uh, yeah, we, we see each other. Got to work from home a little bit and actually see them more than, than normal. But uh, at the same time, I'm excited to be back on the road and you know, scouting locations for further retail expansion. So you live here in the Lehigh Valley? I do. Yeah. I, I yeah. live just below Bangor. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, and you, uh, you were born and raised in Monroe County in the Poconos? I right? was. Yeah. Uh, my, my whole childhood grew up, went to Pocono Mountain. So you, while you are clearly a new executive in the Lehigh Valley, you are not new to the Lehigh Valley. No, I'm not. No. No. I did leave for a time. Um, I spent seven years working in New York City, which was a fantastic, transformative experience for me. Um, helped me glean you know, clarity on what I really wanted to do. When I went to New York City, I was thinking, I'm going to focus on finance, um, but was fortunate that early in my career, after spending some time side by side with finance, that you know, feels a little too narrow. Um, yeah and really decided I wanted to focus my career on you know, omni-channel, direct-to-consumer retail. 
So you are what we call a boomerang, meaning someone who was here in the Lehigh Valley, went off to work in another location, found your way back uh, into the market. That is correct. And I see it more and more in individuals that I'm interviewing, the draw to the area, particularly I, I see a commonality when they're starting families, really questioning whether they want to do so in a metro area. While like myself, you know, they've enjoyed the benefits and experience the, the uh -huh. cities can offer. Um, but the vibrancy, the energy, you know, particularly in Bethlehem, around the Bethlehem Steel property where we're located, it's really had a revitalization that is drawing not only people who grew up here, but others who want to move to the area. Yeah, and obviously we, we love to hear that, and a lot of the work that we do at LVDC is around talent, is around marketing the, the, the region to have people come and discover it or to come back home. We do a lot of work with the colleges and universities with alumni who came to school here and then have left to bring them back. Uh, and it's been growing exponentially. In fact, in the last decade, uh, we have about 10% growth of the population under 35, which is an, an important number. And the area that you're at, you and I both have a little bit of a family connection to, right? You see your grandfather worked at the steel company. He, he did. and not only my grandfather, but ironically, when my grandparents immigrated here from Hungary and settled in the Hellertown area, my grandmother's first job was rolling cigars in a factory in Southside Bethlehem. Yes. And then she ultimately also went on to work at Bethlehem Steel. So I, it, it, And this is getting crazy because my great grandmother worked in the cigar factory in South Bethlehem. She came from Slovenia. She never spoke a word of English and she worked in the cigar mill. And, I, and I'll tell you, when I had a, a job in college doing flooring and tiling, and I redid, they turned the old cigar mill into student apartments, and I did all the flooring and tiling. Wow. So we both have a, a little fantastic. bit of the same language, which was so common for this area being a magnet for immigration, for people coming here. Uh, and if your grandfather was living in Monroe County, driving a distance to go work at the steel mills, and we're finding that exact same thing happening again with a different economy, with companies like Cigar International and other producers and, and manufacturers in the market. You know, that said, we realize that this has been a tough time for a lot of companies to hire. Uh, a lot of our employers here say the number one issue has been workforce, availability of workforce and talent. Um, can you talk a little bit about that process at Cigars and, and what, what you've been going through? Yep. I can say that hasn't been a foreign concept to me. It, it has been challenging, but that is because the area is so primarily located as a shipping hub to you know, some of the densest populations in the country. Um, but with it, you know, it's brought a lot of great careers for individuals. Um, so at Scandinavian Tobacco Group and the division I lead, Cigars International, it's an attractive place to work for employees. Mm -hmm. It's a company who's constantly investing in technology. So we say fairly cutting edge, which, which is a draw. And in a growth mode. Uh, looking out the next and uh, the next uh, few years, what do you see as the biggest part of your job, maybe biggest challenges? So the biggest part of my job in the coming years is an opportunity to expand in brick and mortar retail. Um, and uh, one, of, one of the challenges is certainly keeping up when you're growing mm -hmm. at the pace that we are. Um, when you see that kind of percentage growth, you're not structured for it at the, at the moment it begins to happen. Well, we're laying that foundation now, so I've certainly got more confidence and in, in the future we're ready for it. Mm -hmm. And it's also part of our strategy to continue growing through mergers and acquisitions, so we're preparing for that. Well, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't ask to hear anything better. We're so grateful that Cigars International is here. It's great to have you as a new executive and a new leader uh, for both the company and for our region. Uh, and we're also just thrilled about the growth that, uh, that uh, you're experiencing and that you're doing it here in the Lehigh Valley. So I think we're gonna hear a lot more from Sarah Santos uh, in the years uh, to come. 
Thank you very much, Sarah, for, for joining us and for sharing your experiences and the story of Cigars International and Scandinavian Tobacco Group. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me and doing what you do, making the area attractive for employees. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Nestor, President and Chief Executive Officer at Lehigh Valley Health Network. At LVHN, we offer nationally recognized care close to home. Today and every day, our focus is on the health of our community. We know that a healthy community paves the way for a healthy economy. We're proud to partner with Lehigh Valley Economic Development Corporation as we work together to make the Lehigh Valley strong, vibrant, and safe. At Capital Blue Cross, there are more yeses and fewer noes. Protecting your health and making it easier so you can spend time on what makes you smile. Helping our communities, your families, your businesses, big and small. We have you covered, going the extra mile. It's what we do. Capital Blue Cross, going the extra mile for you. The new executive series would not be possible without the tremendous support of our sponsors. Thank you to all of our sponsors who have continuously supported the LVDC mission during this time. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Lehigh Valley Health Network. Our premier sponsor, Capital Blue Cross. Gold sponsor, Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba. Our event sponsors, Boyle Construction, Clunk and Milan Advertising, and Olympus Corporation of the Americas. Thank you to our interview sponsor, Victolic. Our production sponsor, Countess Communications, and our hosts throughout the Lehigh Valley. Thanks again to all of our sponsors. We hope you enjoy the new executive series.